God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Exodus chapter 5. Moses and Aaron appears before Pharaoh. What we said this morning is that God had commanded or given Moses a mission to go to Egypt before Pharaoh. And the mission was clear. It was to extricate the children of Israel from the tyranny of the Pharaoh and his administration. And also it was clear, and God wanted to achieve that by a mighty hand stretch out. He said, I will perform great miracles before Pharaoh and Pharaoh will let my babies out. And so as Aaron and Moses appear before the Lord, and they told Pharaoh, appear before Pharaoh, and told Pharaoh exactly why God wanted them to leave Egypt. And the reason was clear. Verse 1, Exodus chapter 5. And so the title today is, Worship is in trouble. <laughs> Amen. Worship is in trouble. And so the reason for God asking the children of Israel to leave Egypt is here in verse 1. It said, let my people go. Thus said the Lord, let my people go. Why? That they may hold a feast unto me. That they may hold a feast unto me. Not to go feasting. No. That they may hold a feast unto me. Or that they may sacrifice unto me. Or in simple terms, that they may worship me. So God is calling them out of Egypt into worship. That's what he's saying. In Egypt, they have not had time to worship God. They've been there about 430 years. And this, we're supposed to be worshipers of God, children of God, uh, worship God. But here, they're in Egypt. And maybe they had moments where they gathered together and, and worshiped God a little bit. But the fullness of truly worshiping God was not there. And so God said, uh, Pharaoh, let them go so that they may worship me. And as soon as he said that, worship is in trouble. <laughs> so Pharaoh heard this word and he acted based on what he heard. And what, what Pharaoh said is this, verse 2. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? Who is this Lord that I should obey him? Who is this Lord that I should follow his voice? said, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. To do what? To worship. In other words, I would not let God get worship. <laughs> I wouldn't let him get worship. In verse 3, and they said, the God of the Hebrews had met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with sword. He said, we need to go worship him. We need to praise him. We need to exalt him so he can remove these things from us. You know what the Bible says? It said the Lord inhabit the praises of his people. In other words, when we worship God, God inhabits that moment of worship. Praise the Lord. Do we have a music in church? <laughs> Amen. So the Bible says here, and the God of the Hebrew had met with us. We pray thee, let us go worship this Lord of the Hebrew. And when we don't worship him. 
then pestilence and the sword may come on us. So worship is protection. So when, when you worship God, you're not doing God a favor, you're doing yourself a favor. But sometimes we think, oh, we're, 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 we're talking about coming to church today. We're going to come to church to do God a favor. No, you're not. Without me, God is still God. God does not need me to be God. He doesn't. If I die today, God is still God. <laughs> he does not need you to be God. So I am not doing God a favor by worshiping him. I'm doing me a favor by being a worshiper of God. So when worship, when my worship is in trouble, I still worship him anyways. Because if I stop worshiping him, then I'm in trouble. You know, children of Israel, they were taking the Babylon in captive. And they began to write the psalm by the rivers of Babylon. There we will and there we sat down when we remembered our worship. <laughs> we remembered Zion. So the people that took us captive, they required of us a song. And they all said, why should we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Why? Because they hang their harp on the willow tree. And, and that's what we do because we've been taken captive. Our harps on the willow tree and we can worship him no more. And they will and they cried. When I stop worshiping, it's not my worship that's in trouble. It's me who get myself in trouble. So the reason God said to Moses, go get my babies out of Egypt was for them to worship God. Not so much as the freedom. The freedom is a consequence of what God wanted to do. But it was really worship. It's not so much as the blessing that they got out of Egypt. It was so much worship. That's what God said. That they may sacrifice to me in the world. But you know when they left, God, God blessed them. They had blessings and they came out of it with blessings. They got released from the hand of Pharaoh. But those were secondary. The main reason is what we just read in verse 1. So the reason, the reason God brought you out of your Egypt is not to build good houses and build and buy good cars. Those things are good, they are secondary. But the main reason is that you worship God. That's the main reason. To be a true worshiper who worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. That's the reason. It's not of these other things that we're focused on. Focus on what to eat, what to put on, and all of those things. And, and those, are the, those are what are called the Gentile Trinity. That's not the reason why you're born again. You're born again to be a true worshiper of God. And ask yourself, is your worship in trouble? If it is in trouble, what are you doing about it? Mm. And now look at Pharaoh's reaction. And it's the same modus operandi that the devil had used from creation. And when you read this, you find that there's nothing new under the heaven. It's still the same. The same way he had acted way back. It's the same way he's acting today. Humanity might have changed somewhat. But the things that happen around us has not changed. The same thing. As soon as Pharaoh heard this, Pharaoh got into action to attack the children of Israel and to deprive them of worship. So when the moment you make up your mind that from this day you're going to worship God, you better be ready for what will come at you because the devil doesn't want you to worship God. No, no, no. When you make up your mind today, you're going to be right. We just did in Sunday school. You're going to be regular in church. You're, you're going to obey everything that you heard this morning in Sunday school. Get ready. The enemy is going to show up on Monday morning. 
<laughs> Glory to God. It's the same way that Pharaoh received the word. It was not so much as letting them go, but the worship of God. Why would they stop worshiping the gods of Pharaoh to go worship one god somewhere? He said, no, I'm not going to let them go. To do what? Look at what he said in verse, 11, in verse 7. Sorry, verse 17. Look at, what, look at what Pharaoh said. Verse 17. He said, but he said, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Therefore, you say, let's go and do sacrifice unto the Lord. No, no, well, you got nothing to do. <laughs> That's what Pharaoh said. He said, you, you want to go worship who? Worship God. Don't we have gods in Egypt? He said, you got nothing to do. He said, you got too much time in your hand. That's why you say you're going to worship God. And the same way, the same thing the devil would do today. Oh, yeah, I want to, I want to be a regular in church. I want to read my Bible. As as I, I want to buy myself a good Bible, and I'm going to start reading from Genesis until I hit Revelation, and I'm going to re read all the book in between, and the devil say, you got, you, got too much, you got too much time in your hand. You have too much time in your hand. That's why you want to start to read the word of God. Lord, I want to start praying 30 minutes a day. I want to observe my quiet time. Just pray. Uh, Lord, I, even when I'm traveling, I'm going to pray in my car, and the devil says, you got too much time in your hand. That's why you want to pray. Lord, I, I want to fast. I want to take time to fast before you because I know, Lord, I should fast. The devil said, yeah, you've got too much time in your hand. That's why you want to do all this thing you're talking about. And guess what he's going to do? The same thing that Pharaoh did is what he's going to do. Same thing that Pharaoh did. And some of us are dealing with this right now. We're in that vortex right now. Spinning in that vortex. Not knowing how to get out of it. Same as that thing. And, and, and look at what, what it said. And the, verse 4. And the king of Egypt said unto them. He said, wherefore ye, wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people, let the people from their work get you your, unto you your burden. And Pharaoh said, behold, the people of the land now are many. And ye make them rest from their burden? Pharaoh commanded the same day the tax masters and the officers saying, You shall no more give the people straw to make brick as before. Let them go and get their straw for themselves. That's the first thing Pharaoh commanded them. He said, You were helping them. To, to get their straw so they can make their break. You were bringing the, the sand. You were bringing everything for them. He said, now, don't do that again. He said, the help that you were giving to them, don't give them no help. Let them do it by themselves. He said, children of Israel, from today, your burden is going to increase. I'm going to put you to work. Now, Pharaoh, the children of Israel were having... A, a good time as far as laboring wasn't too bad. They found some time to do other things and, and they seemed to be okay with what was going on. The moment Pharaoh heard that they would go into the wilderness, three day journey to worship God, Pharaoh said you guys got nothing to do. You have nothing to do. You have too much time in your hand. I'm going to increase your burden. Now you will do more work so you have no time. For God. Same thing the devil would do today. The moment you make up your mind, you want to worship God, guess what's going to happen? You will find yourself having much more work. The devil will see to it that he'll give you more work. It may just be that you get to work the next day, they say you got a promotion. We just promoted you to be supervisor. You have more work to do, and, and you will have no time for church no more. Then you have oh God, is this the blessing of the Lord? Is it, then you have, you're confused. Well, I just thought I want to be a worshiper. I want to serve God. And now the Lord brought me a blessing, a promotion. And there's no God. It's the devil. Not, not, every, not everything that looks like blessing is from God. Just get it right. Not everything that looks like blessing, the devil can bless you too. The folks who thought God blessed them, they killed themselves. 
of affair. They thought it was God's blessing. Kill them of affair. So you got to discern, is this from God or is this from the devil? And when, when, the, when the enemy wants to strangle your praise and your worship, this is the first thing he'll do. He'll increase your burden. And your burden could be your anxiety level begins to increase, your health begins to deteriorate, life begins to get hard, things begin to get chaotic around you, and now you're focused on those things, and your focus is taken away from praise and worship. That's exactly what Pharaoh is doing here. Pharaoh looked at them and said, you're not going to worship nobody. I'm going to make sure that your burden increase. You will no longer find help to make your break. You will make it yourself. And guess what? The burden of the children of Israel dramatically increased from that moment. They began to go through real suffering. And sometimes the sufferings that we go through in life is not a suffering that we choose. It's a consequence of our decision to serve God. And so the system brings upon us so much suffering. May I shock you for a moment? Do you know it's the devil that controls the system of this world? Yeah. Yeah. He controls systems of this world. He can use your supervisor against you. You know, your supervisor is not born again, right? Most of us work in places where your bosses are not born again. They're not Christians. They, most businesses are owned by unbelievers. That's why they'll tell you, work on Sunday. And you have no choice. If you don't do it, you're fired. A Christian person who owns a Christian business is not going to tell you, you have to work on Sunday by force. No, it won't do that. But the devil can enter into those folks and begin to manipulate the system against believers and make it hard for believers to serve God. You think it's hard right now? Wait until we get, get into the end of the world. Wait until the spirit of the Antichrist is really moving the world. Government systems, systems set up that have been controlled by demonic powers. Those who are in court, rule or, 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 or operate certain businesses and certain systems in this world. Court people and the devil is using them. The moment they target you as a child of God, you find yourself going through serious pain and serious troubles just to be able to serve God. And then you wonder, what is going on? You know what's going on? They want to take your worship from you. They want to take your worship. Because the enemy knows if I can take your worship from you, pestilence will come. Sword will come. Trouble will come. So the children of Israel didn't get themselves in trouble. What got them in trouble is the fact that Moses, the man of God, came with an announcement to Pharaoh. That Pharaoh, my people, need to worship the true God. And that's what set this whole thing in motion. When Pharaoh called everybody, all of his officers, and said, no, you can't let this happen. These people have too much time. Deprive them of the time of worship. Take it away from them. And occupy those times. You know, nature does not, does not have vacuum. Every moment, every time is to be occupied. Occupy those time. Why? With busy work. With busy work. Sometimes we find we find that you're, you're trying to pray, you're trying to worship God. The enemy occupies your heart with busy work. Like, well, I'm, I'm very busy. And then you look at what you're busy about, it's really nothing. It's just the enemy occupy your time. And what would, should you do in situations like that? Is what Moses did. Call on the Lord. As soon as Pharaoh said, No, you are not going anywhere. None of you, you are not going anywhere. I'm going to see to it that you all stay here. Moses began to call on the name of the Lord. And through mighty signs and wonders, God delivered his people. God delivered his people through mighty signs and wonders. It is your responsibility, my responsibility, when we find ourselves in those times. Just don't take it. Well, it's part of life. It's part of, no, it's not. 
when your worship is taken from you, you say it's part of life. No, it's not part of life. You are a Christian, if I need to remind you. You are born again worshiper. You are a child of God. It's not part of life. You know, everybody's doing it. That's one thing I don't like to hear. No, not everybody. What's everybody? Can't generalize it. There are some folk who are serving God in spirit and in truth. And they love doing it and they continue to do it. They're in the same world that you're in. It's not everybody. No, 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 no. Not everybody doing it. That's the lie of the devil. We justify ourselves by making this type of statement. God has called you and me to true worship. And the devil is going to intercept that call. And the trick of the devil is to increase our burden. It will make life tough for us. But we're not going to let that thing or those things that the devil put in place or set in motion to stop us. And we call on the Lord. It took several trips for Moses to go in and out with Pharaoh. <laughs> he did not give up. <laughs> when Pharaoh said, I'm not letting them go nowhere, Moses said, I'll be back. I'll see you tomorrow. And he goes to consult with God. And he comes back again. And Pharaoh said, no, I'm not going to let it. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow until they were delivered from the hand of the enemy. So you cannot stop consulting with God. To stop consulting with God means you're digging yourself deeper and deeper and deeper. And as Moses went in and out, the strength of God went in and out with him. And finally, the Lord released them from the grip of Pharaoh. For that grip was broken. And they went rejoicing into the wilderness, serving the Lord and worshiping God until they got to the land of promise. There will be giants on the way. It's not going to be a smooth sail. I have never promised you that, and Jesus never promised his disciples that. He said, you will have 100% of all of these things that you have lost with persecution. You're going to have it. You're going to be part of it. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. That's what he said. Be of good cheer. So regardless how tough it is, how hard it is, be of good cheer. Keep coming in and out of God's presence. Keep coming in and out of God's presence. It's a matter of time before the yokes are completely broken and the burdens completely removed. And you'll be a free man, a free woman to truly worship the God of heaven. And then it'll be effortlessly. It'll be effortlessly. It'll just come naturally. Because what is in you becomes so authentic that it brings you to a place of consistency. Like I said before, you cannot be consistent if you are not authentic. No. You can only pretend for a while. Time is going to prove it that it's not real. What is real endures the test of time. Pure gold is never going to become silver. It would always be gold. It will always be gold. It will always be gold until the end of the world. Glory to God. Lift up your hand and bless the Lord this morning. Just tell the Lord. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.